1965, a huge pair of fossil arms were found in the Gobi Desert, and the world collectively lost its mind. The arms were found as part of a joint expedition between Poland and Mongolia, and measured 2.4 metres long. They were named in 1970 as part of a new genus known as Dinochirus, meaning terrible hand. And although they weren't the only thing found, there was also some ribs, a few gastralia and a few vertebrae, nothing captured the public's imagination quite like those arms. And so was the state of Dinochirus specimens for almost 50 years. Paleontologists tried to reconstruct a likeness of the dinosaur from such a limited specimen, but the result ended up looking like some form of giant Jurassic Park Velociraptor. Not terribly accurate, but terrifying nonetheless, and great for PR. In 1970, a Russian paleontologist took a risk and compared the arms to those of sloths, claiming Dinochirus was a climbing dinosaur that lived in the trees. And in 1988, the arms were predicted to be used for defensive purposes, but none of these theories got anywhere even close to the truth, because, well, the truth is really weird. In 2003, a new specimen was discovered that linked the arms to an 11 metre long humpbacked omnivore, and it looks as strange as it sounds. The newer fossils are incredible, and have painted a picture in amazing detail. The dinosaur's diet has been reconstructed quite remarkably as omnivorous, due to the presence of both fish scales and over a thousand gastroliths found within Dinochirus' stomach. Gastroliths are stones swallowed by plant eaters in order to help digest food, and are always seen as indicative of at least a partly herbivorous diet. And Dinochirus would have needed them, it possessed no teeth and instead had a beak, giving it a head more similar to that of a hadrosaur, or a really deranged duck. Whatever works for you. Remarkably, we also know what ate Dinochirus. Bite marks found on the original specimens Gastralia are from Tarbosaurus, an indicative of a predator-prey relationship, as well as offering an explanation as to why the skeleton was so broken up in the first place. Add to its strange appearance is Dinochirus's sail. This was much thicker than the likes of Spinosaurus and would have resembled more of a camel's hump. It was thought to have helped support the animal's abdomen and legs. Although this has no analogies in modern animals, it can be likened to modern cable stay bridges in how it would have supported the animal. Dinochirus also possessed a pygostyle, Greek for rump pillar. These are fused bones at the end of the tail designed to support feathers, meaning yes, Dinochirus was feathered, and let's be honest, not just on its tail. Finally, Dinochirus is a known water lover. Its wide, blunt toe claws would have helped stop it sinking into soft sediment and indicate it waded frequently. So where does Dinochirus fit with other dinosaurs, and are its relatives more normal looking? Well, despite whatever you might think it looks like, and really it looks like something from a bad sci-fi film, Dinochirus is actually a primitive Ornithomimosaurian. This is the cloud made famous by Gallimimus in Jurassic Park, although the real Gallimimus looked nothing like that. And although they are related, Dinochirus was much slower and much bigger than any other Ornithomimosaurians. It's actually the biggest known of, and to make up for this, its pelvis and hind limbs are much thicker than its relatives. Despite the animal's hollow bones helping to keep its weight low, the creature's great size prevents it from reaching its relative's high speeds, and it wouldn't have run anything like Gallimimus. Compared to its relatives, Dinochirus also had a tiny brain, meaning as well as fat and slow, it was also stupid, and at this point, you're wondering why we were ever scared in the first place. But even though it's not at all scary, we can all agree it's cool, and I definitely want one as a pet. So I hope you enjoyed that video and hopefully learned something. If you did, please like and comment because it makes YouTube like me more, and if you're new you should subscribe. I post about once a millennium, so it's super low commitment. Bye!